Divine Truth Assistance Group Group Assistance Sessions – Putting Principles of Divine Truth into Action This recording is from the Developing My Will to Love Group and is part of the Education and Love series. In the Session 1 Group Feedback presentation, Jesus gives group feedback regarding the fact that God is doing everything He can do to educate us in God's love and truth and help us feel more pleasure and happiness in our lives. And it is only the exercise of our own will that prevents this education. Recorded on the 21st of February 2016 in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. Now comes the group feedback. The group feedback, ironically, is very similar to what, uh, what it raised with uh, um, Elvira. And that, it, that is, you need to start seeing that when you're not receiving God's love, it is because of your own rejection of it. Right? So... Remember, uh, to receive an education from God, we need to have the connection with God. So this God is us. Put, put our hands up. Yay! So there's us. And to receive love from God and to get an education from God, there needs to be a connection between God and ourselves. Right? And, and so, so the education comes through the reception of God's love, but also through the, re the reception of truth from God. You can actually receive truth from, directly from God. But, and, I, and I think uh, recently we did a channeling with somebody... Ah yes, it was that guy, remember that guy who was shot dead in Outback Australia, a, a farmer. Um, remember, um, we talked to him about, about the reception of, of God's love and receiving God's love and finding out the truth about some things. And remember, I asked him to ask God about the truth about how he treated his wife while he was on earth. And he just got a whole heap of very, very terrible emotions instantly. And he tried to shut all that down in that moment, right? Because he, he couldn't cope with everything that God was telling him about how he treated his wife. Right? So you can actually receive truth from God too, just like you can receive love from God, right? And to receive an education in love, we need to receive the truth and some love from God. But... But And God's willing to give both. God's willing to give you the secrets of the universe. Like, And if God could do it in an instant, God would. Of course, that is very dependent upon your condition in terms of what you can emotionally cope with. And for, most, for, for everybody, unless they have a lot of development. And in my opinion, unless, you, unless you're almost God, you wouldn't have the development to receive everything that God would have to share at the time. That's why it's a gradual process of growth. It needs to be a gradual process of growth because if God shared everything with you in a moment, it would literally destroy you because you wouldn't be able to emotionally cope with it, right? And so God gives you the things that, that, um, that you've stretched emotionally enough to receive. But that being the case, the biggest impediment that we have is actually the barriers we place around ourselves to the reception of love. Right? They're the, they're, the, they're the biggest impediments. And it's not just the reception of love. So, so we put this, we write that down as a barrier that we put around ourselves. And it's about receiving love and truth. Now, our biggest barriers are about receiving truth, ironically. Have you noticed that? You notice how when I talk about love, a lot of you are affected quite emotionally. But when I talk about truth, a lot of you just go into a big shutdown. Like it's really quite noticeable. 
and then of course some darker spirits come around and really get on you as well and you know you get quite down on yourself and judgmental and a lot of other things and when you start when I say judgmental you get very judgmental of yourself in the very first audiences I had like eight or nine years ago when I was talking about truth that just get judgmental of me <laughs> right but after a while you guys have been with me for a while now many of you you've heard for a while now you just get judgmental of yourself instead of judgmental of me right but either one's not very good because judgmental, being judgmental of yourself is putting a barrier around your soul, preventing any truth from entering it. Does that make sense? The judgment is a barrier. The, re the resistance to truth is caused by many barriers and, and it's the resistance to truth, the barrier to truth, that prevents in the end the majority of God's truth from entering a person. And that's why the Holy Spirit, remember this connection, is called the Holy Spirit, right? The Holy Spirit, and, and I called it that. It's not like God called it that. It's just, let's put it like that. So these, this connection, if you can see, think of it as a wire connecting God with you, is actually the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth so so you can see that the connection with the holy spirit is dependent upon the truth of the individual or you could say dependent upon whether the individual rejects truth or not right so many of you are open to receiving what you define as love while at the same time closed to receiving truth about yourself and about your life because when you receive the truth about yourself and about your life you get emotionally triggered things come up for you emotionally that you don't want to feel and there's the problem the desire to not feel the emotions that happen inside of you when the truth is exposed you follow and because you don't want to feel that, you've now disconnected yourself from the truth, you've rejected the connection, the only conduit by which love can flow is through that Holy Spirit connection, you've rejected the connection, and now the love can't flow. And it's totally under your control. And that's the thing I'd like to remind you of. It is totally under your control. It's got nothing to do with God because God's already doing everything to make it happen. All the things are in place. All the things are ready. Everything's ready to go from God's perspective, right? And only you can prevent it. Only you. And you do. And in fact, many of you make that choice every day of preventing the flow of love. You make that choice every day. Prevent it, prevent it, prevent it. And most of you prevent it because you don't want to have the truth along with it. You, want, you, you believe, and this is the false belief, that love is possible without having to handle the truth. That's what you believe. Does that make sense? You believe it's possible without having to feel listen to or hear truth and that's where you come unstuck all right nina for you <clears throat> you mentioned a comment that's been sitting with me in that there's sin in choosing to be alone yes there is yes <laughs> which is something that i have personally done a lot of yes and is not wanting to be loved a part of that because when you're with others, there's that possibility? Well, I think there's a lot of things that are involved in that. It's not just that. I think that's what you would like to believe, that it's just not wanting to be loved. But a lot of it's about not wanting to have to love someone else. A lot of it's about not ha wanting to have to deal with somebody else in your life and interact with somebody else in your life, not wanting to have your comfort levels triggered. So, that, so you can't make a hard and fast rule about why a person is alone but it is a sin to remain alone. God, and the reason why it's a sin is because God created two halves to make one whole. So there's another half of you somewhere, right? 
And, and from God's perspective, when you're perfected in love, you will be with that other half. Do you follow? You will be there with the other half. So if you desire to remain alone and you construct a life where it's alone, then you're already out of harmony with what God's laws of love about your own soul are. If you really loved yourself, you wouldn't be focused on you know, m maintaining some kind of life where you've got total control of every single thing around you just so that you don't have to have somebody in your life who might influence you or reject you or run away from you or whatever it is that you're afraid of. But there's literally hundreds of reasons why a person may choose that. Does that make sense? So we can't make some hard and fast rules about it. But the important thing here, what I'm trying to get at, is that most of us, with God, put up these barriers to God's truth and God's love. Right? And when I say God's truth, most of you do not have now barriers to hearing more about God's universal truth. Right? That's why you've been listening, some of you for five, six years have been listening, You've been okay listening because you're okay with the universal truths that you're hearing, you see? And isn't that the case? Most of you feel that way. And in fact, when you cast your mind back over the hearing the universal truths, every time you heard a universal truth, what did you feel inside of yourself? It's like excitement and joy and a lot of different, like, really lovely emotions, weren't they? Isn't that what you felt? Wasn't that what drew you back to hear more? All right. So, so what happens? What happens is we start to hear personal truths, and then what happens? These, see, these personal truths trigger emotions inside of us that we don't want to feel, and so then what happens is we start to want to reject what we're hearing now, right? And this is exactly how you treat God. So God shares, so God's trying to share all this universal truth with you, and you're okay with that. Well, you're okay with most of that. Now, in the beginning, some of you were really triggered by that, even, some of you, but you'd go and have a think about it, have a feel about it, and then you'd come back again because you know it's probably true, and, and then you'd you know you'd hear more, and it's just fascinating, and it's fascinating to your soul. You feel joy about that. But because these universal truths triggered very little personal emotions within you you could absorb them, right? But when you start hearing the personal truths, what you need to be able to do yourself to work through these things in terms of the use of your will, you then start getting resistive because there's a whole heap of emotions inside of you that you don't wish to feel that God wants you to feel. Because God knows that they are the emotions stopping you from further growth. So this is what happens, you eventually, what happens generally is a person hears the truth, they have a good bit of growth initially just hearing the universal truth, right? And then it just plateaus out, right? And it just goes on for years and years and years and years and years where there's no change and usually some degradation because they start losing faith in the things they originally heard, right? And, and this plateau occurs primarily because you're in a space of rejecting truth and love. And you'd prefer to reject God's love than accept God's truth and have God's love. That's how strong your resistance to truth is. You'd prefer to actually reject love even rather than actually accept the truth. You follow, Mia? Is, would this also apply when um, I feel sometimes I open up to receive a bit of God's love and straight away I get a, an emotion of, oh, I'm going to owe so much to him. because So I prefer cutting off the, the reception of any love because of the fear of having to owe so much that I, I don't well, have. That, yeah, that's an emotion that's getting triggered from your childhood because that's obviously what, if, what was, you were made to feel, that if someone loves you, you then owe them in return. But God doesn't feel that. So it's an untruth that it's an gets untruth. triggered when there's a reception of love. Yes, and that's what happens. Whenever you receive love, untruths will be triggered and you have to feel them. You have to feel about them. 
Uh, and you don't want to. Well, I, 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 I don't close. know it's an untruth. I, I, so I just cut off any... Possible. Yeah, you're better off going the opposite direction. You go, okay, this is an untruth. This is a trigger thing that's getting triggered. So obviously if I'm receiving God's love and this untruth is getting triggered, God's telling me this is impeding the flow of love into my soul, this belief that I have. So where did this belief come from? Um, and what emotions under it are you trying to stop yourself from feeling by having this belief? Um, um, so you, you, you feel like you'll owe somebody. What, what's the feeling that you were going to owe them? Um, adoration? I don't know. Like I have to give back a lot. Yeah, it's not adoration. I, I feel it's something to do with earning, but, uh, but I have to... Yeah, well, Corny's good at this one. He would know what... <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> You've had that same emotion, haven't you, where, where people, when people love you, and do things for you, you feel you owe them something in return, don't you? Forever. Yeah, forever. For, forever. Yes. Yeah. Right. That's something that comes from your childhood. It's not how God feels. So that's a false belief. So, so there's this concept in most people when you're given something that it means now that you've got to do something in return, right? Now, that's not how God feels. That's how you feel. That's preventing the flow of more love. You're preventing the flow of more love because you think if you get more love from God, you're going to owe God more. Yeah. So work through why you believe that. And that comes from hurt emotions in your childhood where people demand, people gave you something and then said, right, now that I've given you that, now you've got to do this and this and this and this and this for me, you see. And that's what you don't want to feel anymore of. And so you'd prefer to not be loved and owe somebody something. But your, your, your feeling that you owe them is a false belief. So uh, next time this gets triggered, I should go back and m maybe use my intellect to kind of. Well, see what I would do is I'd just let God love me more, and um, pretty soon, whatever the false <laughs> belief is, probably I'm probably going to be bawling about it. <laughs> do you follow? So I have to allow for the possibility that it is a false belief to start with. It's not a possibility, is it? I mean, emotionally. <laughs> it really is one. <laughs> emotionally, yeah. Well, it is a false belief. Like, like the reality, if someone truly loves you, they will do things for you without expecting anything in return. That's what real love is. See, that's God's definition of love. Your definition of love is that when somebody gives something to you, you owe them in return. That's your definition of love. Wherever it comes from, it doesn't really matter. That's your definition of love. Your definition of love, God's basically saying to you when you receive God's love, God's basically saying to you, you've got to let go of your definition of love here because your, your definition is flawed. There's a problem with it. You believe that you owe something in return when you're loved and you don't. And this is stopping you from, from receiving love. So the guilt of... Oh, I just have to allow myself to feel the guilt of o owing and, and for that to be released in order to keep the flow open? No, you've got to feel where this guilt came from because it certainly didn't come from God. You don't owe God anything. So the truth is you don't owe God anything in return. That's truth. God doesn't expect anything from you in return. That's the truth. The thing that you believe opposite to that and you've got to find out where the source of that belief was. And it's from your childhood. And it's probably because, and most mothers and fathers feel that if they do something for you, I'm your parent, I do something for you, I did this for you, I've done this for you for 20 years, you now owe me respect. You now owe, you know, these are the things that parents tell children, right? All incorrect. If they say, if they say that, they're already out of harmony with love. Right? But you believe it. And I intellectually know the memories. I, I know this intellectually from my So you go back to I those memories and feel them. Emotionally. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Um, we're really pushing it, guys, unfortunately. 45. I've got to start to 40. Okay, I'll let five more minutes happen. Um, Gary. I uh, yeah, just, um, I'm a bit confused, like, I thought like I had to re release like a huge course of emotion before I could receive God's love. So is, can you just like long for it and then see what emotions that brings up or is, yeah. 
if you if you think you're longing for it and you're not receiving it are you longing for it no no and so what would be the reason why you're not receiving it I, i've already said to you that god wants to give it to you yeah so what would be the reason why you're not receiving it there's got to be a reason like everything with god has a reason yeah. there's no never no reason so right? i'd have to have like some emotional blocks you have to have some kind of thing happening inside yeah. of you where you're rejecting it. Yeah. Purposefully. Yeah. All right. Whatever those things are. Now, it can be a multitude of things. It can be where you're choosing to sin in complete disharmony with what God feels about a certain matter. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It can be that. And you don't want to see it. It could be that you believe you're fine and, and God's saying, no, mate, you're not here on this issue. You're not. And you've got to change on this issue. Right. right, and you're rejecting my love until you change on this issue. All oh, right, right, yep. yep. But it's always you're rejecting His love. It's not the other way around. It's not God saying, "I'm not going to give you love until you sort out this issue." Right. Yep. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. the issue itself that rejects the flow of love or truth from God. The issue that you're retaining inside of yourself. You follow? Yep. It's not God. God's not up there going, oh, is Gary doing the right thing today? Yes, he is, so I'll give him a bit of love. Yeah, I, I, that's what I believe. I know that's what yeah, you believe. Yeah. It's not what it is. I have to work for it and earn it. And, of know, course. Yeah. Well, this is one of the false beliefs that many of you have, that you've got to work for it and earn it. No, God's wanting to give you love every single moment of every single day. But, and even while you're asleep, because you can still receive it when you're in your sleep state. Yeah, he wants to do it every single moment, every single day. That's what he wants. Now, if he wants that, and he's all-powerful with the exception of one thing that he's decided, and that is he's decided to honour your free will. Your will determines the flow of God's love. Your will. That's the only thing that really determines how God's love flows into your soul. Your will. Nothing else does because God's will is already engaged to want to give you God's love. And that applies to any person on this planet and every person in the spirit world. That truth applies. God wants to give God's love to absolutely every single being God created. Every single soul, human soul that God created. He wants to give his love. So if so if you think you're asking for God's love and you're not receiving it, then you can't be asking for it. There's got to be some blockages going on inside of you where you either don't want to receive love or don't want to receive truth. Does that make sense? It's yeah. got to be one or the other. Yeah. They are the only two things that can be stop the flow, stopping the flow. You follow? So, and that is completely your determination. You're, you determine the outcome of that through the exercise of your will. This is why we've labelled our first course, if you like, in love, as developing my will to love. Right? And with, spe with specific emphasis on the word, whoops, too many wills, <laughs> too many wills there, on will, my will. Right? Because everything that results from your education from God, remember, we need the education from God in order to grow in, in, in our education in love because only God has a higher viewpoint of love than anybody else here on the planet and anybody else in the spirit world. It's only God who knows everything about love. So that's who we need the education from. Right? But it's only ourselves through the exercise of our true soul-based will that are determining whether that truth and love flows, the education even flows, into our soul. It's only ourselves impeding the flow. That's it. Nothing else. God's not there making arbitrary decisions, going, oh, he's being a nice guy now, so I'll give him some love. God wants to give you love whether you're a nice guy or not. Now, of course, the more of God's love you receive, the nicer the guy you'll become, right? But, but God's willing to give love to people in the hell, so, so they're not very nice guys, but he's still willing to give them love. 
He still wants to give them love. Everything is set up to give them love, but they're just not receiving it. They're not receiving it because their will is not engaged to receive it. You follow? And this is why it's one of the most important things you need to learn in your education about love is how to exercise your will to receive. And what I'm saying to you is because of this belief system that many of you have that truth and love don't go together, you think you can select love and reject truth at the same time. And what I'm suggesting to you is that you cannot expect to receive love while at the same time rejecting truth. And that is not only from God, that's also from each other. That's also in a relationship. You will not be able to love one another in a relationship while you do this. It's, it applies. It's a general principle of love, universal principle. You cannot expect to receive love while you're rejecting truth. Do you follow? You can't. If you reject truth, you also are rejecting love. That's the truth. Right? So if God's love, if, I'm, if I think I'm asking through the exercise of my soul-based desire to receive God's love and I am not receiving it, then I must be doing something else and that is rejecting either the love itself or the truth from coming from God. Do you follow? I must be rejecting it because there's no other thing that can be happening. Otherwise, I'd be receiving it. So when Elvira was receiving it, at that, at that point she was... Well, she started receiving it, yeah. but what did she do? She blocked, she she blocked it yeah. because she wanted to reject love because love exposes a whole heap of pain for Elvira about who all the time she hasn't been loved and she doesn't want to cry, have to cry about all those things and really sob about them and really let it all go, right? So that's her reason for rejecting it. But that's her reason. doesn't mean it's the same as yours. Right. What's your reason? You think you're asking for God's love, but you're not receiving. So what's, what's your reason? You're not receiving the love and then switching it off at this stage. You're not even receiving it. So what's got to be happening there? I've got an issue with reception. Of? Re receiving love. Well, mo most probably it's got an issue of receiving truth. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Most probably, yeah, yeah. but but yes, it will be one or the other or both, and usually it's one or the other, or usually it's both, you know, yeah, yeah. We we reject we we well, as I've pointed out to you in that illustration I gave about your initial enthusiasm about hearing God's truth from a universal perspective. You feel joy, excitement, you want, you want to come and hear more, it's fascinating, you're talking about it all the time, you're just enjoying the process of learning, you're, you're not even thinking of yourself in that moment, are you? you you're just thinking, wow, this is fantastic, I've got to have more of that. And, and, and yet as soon as the personal truth comes along, what happens then? Oh, it'll shut down now, and I don't, don't want to hear that. No, it's not true. I, you know, this is where we go, right? So, can you see we're okay receiving universal truth from God when it does not challenge us emotionally? But as soon as it challenges us emotionally, what do we choose to do? We choose to reject it. And in the rejecting of truth, we're also rejecting love. God's love cannot flow and it's not God's fault. It's not that God has made some arbitrary decision to make God's love not flow. What God has done is, is, is there's laws involved with the flow of love and that is truth and love are synonymously connect, uh, are connected together. They're synonymous with each other. You can't have one without the other in a lot of ways. They're not synonymous in the sense of definition, but they're synonymous in the sense that they must go together in terms of their reception. And it applies in your relationship as much as it applies in the relationship with God. Like You cannot love your partner if you're not being truthful with your partner. You just cannot. And your partner cannot love you and if they're being untruthful with you. They cannot. It's the same thing applies, right? It's the same 
principle of how love works. This is a part of your education, to understand that truth and love go hand in hand. They, they are joined together at the hip. <laughs> right? They're like Siamese twins. <laughs> and you can't separate them, and whenever you attempt to do so, both cannot flow. You won't receive both under those circumstances. Right? And I feel that's uh, part of the group feedback I wanted to give because, because what I see many of you attempting to do is you firstly long for God's love, you think you're longing for God's love and not receiving it, and then you think it's God's fault. But God's doing everything God possibly can to have this love flow, right? So it's not God's fault. It, it's something going on inside of you where you're rejecting the Siamese twins. The two things that go together, the, either truth or love, you're rejecting one or the other of them. That's what you're doing. And why do we do it? Because we have emotional justifications for the rejection of them. That's why we do it. We feel it's wrong, or we feel we shouldn't have to, or we feel angry, or we feel justified, or we feel too hurt or ashamed to feel the hurt and ashamed, or we feel that we can't cope with our emotions. We have a whole set of other beliefs, but whatever they are, they're just the rejection of truth. And as we're rejecting truth, we're rejecting love. Love cannot flow. And it's very, very helpful for you to understand this in your relationship with God because it's also going to be very helpful for you to understand it in your relationship with your other half. You, you cannot join with your soulmate without entering the same kind of relationship. You can't. So, so whatever you learn with God helps you with your relationship with your other half too. right? And what God's trying to teach you is is that actually the way God's designed the universe is that love and truth go hand in hand and they cannot be separated and if you attempt to separate them, both of them cannot exist. And what you're trying to do is separate them and still get loved. And it will not happen. It cannot happen. Love and truth have to be together in order for you to be loved. Right? And when you think about it, it's such a powerful thing to know because it's the secret to knowing all truth as well. Isn't that wonderful? Not only do you get to be loved, but also you get to have all this lovely truth enter your soul while you're being loved. Isn't that a wonderful blessing of being loved? All the things you've ever wanted to know about the universe, about your playground, they're all going to be presented to you if you allow the flow of both. Right? But as soon as you attempt this separation, as soon as you want love to have some kind of addiction in it, you know, as soon as you want to be loved in your facade, as soon as you want to have love even though you're doing a lot of unloving things to others or painful things to others, now you've separated truth and love, now both cannot exist, both cannot flow. Right? So that's a very harmful thing to do to yourself. So that, that's the thing I wanted to remind you of in this, in this sort of group truth se session. And, and if you can remember it, it will be a very powerful assistance to your future growth. Right? Because you'll realise that every time you're not receiving love, it's probably because either you're blocked to the reception of love, like we discussed with Elvira, or you're blocked to the reception of truth. Right? Or both. And then it's just a matter of looking at what inside of you causes you to have these blockages. Right? This is what a self-responsible being will do. They'll examine themselves to find out the reason why. And they won't blame God for something that's not God's, under God's control. God gave you free will, this gift of will. It's under your control. You are the only person who can prevent the flow of God's love into your soul. No one else can prevent it. No spirit can prevent it. God won't prevent it. 
you're the only person who can prevent it. And we prevent it daily, hourly, minute, <laughs> every minute of the day, generally, we prevent it by not addressing some things, by particularly not addressing the issues of truth or not addressing the issues of why we want to reject love. All right, well, let's just have a short break. Um, can we make it a, a ten? Uh, we'll make a ten-minute break still. So, can we come back at ten past three? Yep. Thank you. <laughs> 